You are listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. This is our midweek, a quiet life podcast that focuses on living a quiet life, mind your own affairs, work with your hands, and be dependent upon nobody. For more information, visit us at thepursuitofmanliness.com. All right, we're going to try this again. So, a little backstory on Monday. More than likely, this podcast will air on Wednesday. But on Monday, I recorded this podcast, Quiet Life Podcast, talking about the pursuit of wilderness. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Recorded the podcast, got it all put together, uploaded it to the platforms so that it would release on Monday morning, like we typically do. Got thinking about you know what I communicated and what I want to communicate. And, and I'm fired up about this, uh, what I'm going to talk about. And I just felt like what, how I communicated was a little, I don't know, stuffy. It's, it, just, it just didn't feel right. So I deleted it. I had a friend say, hey, I saw on YouTube there was a you know, video that was going to premiere you know, on Wednesday. You know, it's gone. I was like, I deleted it. I just don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it's what I'm trying to communicate. So let me, let me explain what I'm talking about here for you guys that are completely lost. Um, I think it was on Sunday. Yeah, it was Sunday, uh, October 25, 24, probably 24th, if I'm doing the math correct. 23rd, forgive me, October 23rd. Uh, on Instagram, I made a post that there was a new uh, extension, a new, uh, a new element to the pursuit of manliness, and it was pursuit of wilderness. So the Instagram name is at Pursue Wilderness. And I kind of gave some backstory there, and which what I want to do on this podcast here. And just explain to you for the last, you know, three or four months, uh, a few of a few of the guys within the pursuit of manliness who've been wrestling with talking about kind of, you know, walking through like what could it look like to have an intentional focus to help guys get outdoors. Now, these guys are already guys that go outdoors, They're already guys who um I don't know if you would cons- I don't know if they consider themselves outdoorsmen. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but but they do things outdoors. And, and and I knew that because I know them pretty well. And so just saying, hey, what about an idea where we try to encourage people to do this and and maybe along the way that we could have some intentional moments where we say, hey, we're going to do a hike or a fishing trip or whatever at these like what could happen? And we're we're talking like big picture, you know, what could happen if we really try to, you know, create uh, this intentional focus. And so we've been kind of, you know, working through that, kind of flushing that out. And I've shared with you guys, um, I try to be very honest and transparent on here. I share with you guys kind of my, my growth in this area of, of, of getting outside and doing outdoor things is just really come about probably in the last, you know, seven years. And it, and it was, you know, just this stirring inside me that I felt like God had really been waking me up to say, let's go. Like, let's do this. Let's live. Let's have some adventure. Let's measure yourself against the elements. Now, I, I don't want to give you the impression I'm some kind of Bear grills or some kind of, um, I can't think of names right now, but I'm just a guy. And I've told you, it was probably about three years ago, two, three years ago, where around January, February, I got this itch that I wanted to start a fire. I did not know how to start like a fire pit fire. To me, it was like, put some wood in there, light a match, whatever. So I went out in my garage inside. It was freezing. It was probably February. It was freezing cold outside. And I went out in the garage and I couldn't, I didn't have any like wood. I mean, I had some like scraps from things. So I got them together. I cut down a branch off a tree. I tried to cut it up. I mean, I'm just building like this jank fort basically within the fire pit trying to get the fire going as you can assume it didn't work and I'm sure the neighbors thought what is he doing well they're right I had no idea what I was doing but I was determined I even went inside got some of that fire starter fluid it was so cold it was frozen like it was goopy and I'm trying to put that on just to get it going I'm thinking I'm getting a fire going I put gasoline on it I mean I did I got some stuff going but nothing sustainable and man I felt defeated and that's why some of you guys don't go out and do this stuff because you don't know and you know you'll feel defeated and listen as grown men we're not trying to look for more ways that we feel defeated I went to YouTube as most of us would do and I learned how to do it and so I would go outside and I would try things that I saw on YouTube like okay I stack this way or I'll, I'll lay it this way whatever 
One of the tricks I learned was like the cotton ball with the Vaseline. And, you know, I have some in a bag almost all the time. Uh, for me, like I'll put some, like that's just a fun, easy way to start fire. And and I would do, the, you know, the fire starter and I would try. I mean, I will say today, if you need a fire going, I can, I can get it done. Now, I'm not the best by any means. As a matter of fact, I got some friends that if they're with me and we're going to have a fire, they're up, right? But if you needed to get it done or my wife who loves a fire, um, had been the one who started it for all these years because I didn't know how to do it. And I wasn't really an outdoor person at all. So I would kind of mill around. I'd go out there eventually. Now she's like, hey, I want, let's let's get a fire. I'm like, I can't wait. Come, come around the fire I have built. Enjoy. Turn on the music. Get the fat and calf. Make a pot of coffee. Like, turn on the porch light. Like, I want everyone to see the fire I have made, right? I don't have to be the best, but I can get it done. And same way with like going out hiking or kayaking or putting a tent in the backyard. All these things, I'm telling you, all these things I have been learning the last seven years. And I've been learning them, some of them the hard way, sometimes the expensive way, and definitely the humbling way. But I've learned them, and I'm learning skills that I feel like I am able to hopefully share with others. I'm having some experiences that I feel like are shareable. Um, and I have, I have, a, 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 again, this is kind of the heart of this, the pursuit of manliness. We have a lot of guys in here who are very skilled in these areas. I mean, whether they have land or they just have very intentional lives to go do this stuff or in seasons of life. For that. And, and I've learned a ton from them. Like, Hey, what do you use for that? Or how do you do that? Or what's the best one to purchase for this? Or uh, at what time of year should I do this? And so for us, this is like a, an awakening. And I realized I had spent so much time being uh, climate controlled. So much of my life was indoors. And I said, we're, we're not going to do that anymore. We're not going to live like that no more. And again, as the pursuit of manliness has grown, and, and I'm trying to, I'm doing this with essentially no notes until the very end when I get down to like the point, the hook, if you will. I just want to talk to you. And that's what I felt. That's why I deleted the previous podcast. I felt like it was too scripted. As the pursuit of manliness has grown, the gatherings have grown as far as guys meeting up with one another. Sometimes they're official gathering where I'm promoting it within tribe or I'm promoting it on the website or whatever. And those are so good. They really are so good. And sometimes it's just guys going out of their way to say, hey, I'm traveling through you know, Tennessee. I'm in this town. Do you want to meet up for coffee or do you want to meet up for whatever? We got guys who have like they have done the go rucking together. We have guys that have done the Spartan race together. We have guys that go hiking together. Um, you know, again, the, the, the runs the gamut. And so when I think of pursue wilderness, what I'm really thinking is pursue like your wilderness, pursue adventure, pursue getting outside. We were tried, they tried to stuff a lie down our throat a couple years ago that the safest thing you could do was stay indoors. You will never convince me the healthiest thing for me, my wife, or my kids is to stay inside. That's how you get sick. How much fresh air do you think you got rolling through your house? Not as much as outside. Now, I get it. Where Depending on where you live, it's going to be a little different. But for crying out loud, it's always going to be better to get sunshine. It will always be better to get oxygen in your lungs, to do things that measure yourself. What I mean by measure yourself is I, I'm a guy that doesn't slow down really well. I'm, I'm really trying to work on this, man. I'm really trying to work on slowing down. So when I build a fire, since I've already used that analogy, I go about Mach 3 to build a fire. Again, perhaps this is why I don't build the greatest fires, but I'm 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 too I'm too fast I'm too I want to get it I want to get it done that's good enough no measure yourself you say well you see if you want to go as fast as you want to go that isn't going to last very long or if you want to go on a hike and you want to go as fast as you want to go and you want to just you know let's get it done so we can say we get it done you're going to miss out one you're going to miss out the whole thing and and not enjoy it number two you're going to exhaust yourself depending on where you went and you're going to make everyone around you miserable right measure yourself. There's times where, you, you know, for us, I, I was not a camper. So I decided, I think I bought the tent online. So I bought like a six-person tent. 
because I want a little room for, you know, I know those tents are tight, so I want a little space. And our first uh, camping thing was I put it in the backyard. We had a fire. Of course, my wife had to start the fire, I'm sure. But I put the tent up, bought the tarp that went below it, got the whole setup, ran an extension cord out so my kids could watch some kind of movie. You know, I was trying to make it this great family gathering. It was like in October. We froze. I mean, it was so cold. But my kids still remember it. Goodness, that was, that might have been seven years ago. Uh, maybe maybe it was a little bit longer than that. I felt like the stirring started probably nine years ago. It took me two years to kind of get going. You know what I'm saying? You, you're a guy. You, you get this. And so we're seeing all these guys like do things and we're doing things like in the last year we've had the retreat where guys will come. Actually, we've had two retreats now within about a calendar year where guys have come to Indianapolis and some of them camp out. Some of them stay in a hammock. Some of them have slept by the fire in their vehicles, in deer blinds, in semi trucks, RVs, everything. Some of them stay in hotels, Airbnbs, whatever, but we're gathering. We had a gathering in Kentucky where, um, you know, a number of us went hiking for a few days. We stayed in a cabin, you know, ate food over a fire, just, you know, sit around, you know, jokes, all that stuff. Measuring yourself against the elements, against doing things, against one another. It's good for you. Uh, we had a gathering in Missouri where we went, we did a little hiking, we shot some guns, we ate great food, um, a time of worship. Like it wasn't like scheduled or here's the songs we're going to sing. It just happened. It was very organic. And there are things that happen around a campfire. There are things that happen on a trail. There's things that happen in a kayak. There's things that happen when you're fishing. There's things that happen when you're in a deer blind. There's things that happen when you're sitting in like a camping chair, just somewhere that just don't happen the same way when you stay inside all the time. They just don't. And so I'm passionate about get outdoors. I don't care what the climate is. I don't care what the time of year is. You got to get outside. I mean, take the word of God outside with you. I love Genesis 15, 5, where God calls Abram to go outside. It wasn't that Abram didn't know what outside looked like. He said, I want you to go outside and I want you to count the stars. If indeed you are able to count them and so shall your offspring be. It wasn't that he was getting on Sarah's nerves or anything. It was that Abraham needed a change of perspective. And when you go outside, you get that change of perspective, don't you? Whether you're watching when the sun's going down or you're watching the weather or you're watching uh, the incline or you're watching the terrain or you're watching, you know, what you're catching or what you're, you're hunting or you're watching the fire, whether you need to add more wood to it or not, or if you're going to make s'mores or whatever you're going to do, you're measuring yourself. And I think we've lost the, the art and the desire to measure ourselves. So therefore, we measure ourselves on these things, on our cell phones. If you liked my post, if you left a comment, if you left a, a thumbs up or whatever, like, we measure ourselves on, on, on things that aren't that wonderful. They just, they are not. And so for me, I've had to, I've had to eat some humble pie. My wife, I'm not fooling her. She knows this guy doesn't possess a lot of skills. I remember my first Leatherman, you know, those multi-tool things that somebody gave me. I was so proud of that thing. Man, I wore it everywhere. I, had no, I really didn't know how to do it. It was like the first like real tool. That, it was like an older guy from our, our home church. He gave it to me as a wedding gift. If he had, if he had any idea, this, this guy has no clue how to use it. But man, I felt like I had something. And I know today, if you were to go out in my garage, and you know, here it is seven years I've said since I, this kind of stirring has taken place, that garage is way different today than it was seven years ago. And again, I'm not trying, this is not an alpha male brag. What I hope you get from what I'm trying to communicate here is, here's a guy that possessed zero skills. If he can figure some of these things out, so can you. If he can humble himself enough to do this, so can you. And here's why this matters. I'm not trying to build a resume of skills. I'm not trying to impress you on Instagram because I won't. I'm not trying to create a YouTube channel to say, let's see the adventure that that, that old Samuels guy has next. Nope. You wouldn't watch it. You don't care. Because of that, three things have happened. Three things have happened. Number one, the most obvious thing would be, I firmly believe, and this is why I'm so fired up about Pursue Wilderness. I believe I connect with God in a completely different way outside than inside. I mean, after all, God is supposed to be our shelter, our refuge, our resting place, right? I have a house. It has a lot of stuff in it. 
If you're listening to this, please understand, I'm, I'm not living in an RV somewhere, although that is the dream. I'm not living off the land somewhere. I'm not off the grid, obviously, because I'm using electronics here, although that would be fantastic. I live a pretty regular life like a lot of you guys. What I realized, though, was I needed to create more margin to get outside. Earlier today, it was 9.51 a.m. We have a staff meeting at 10 a.m. I just went outside, and for nine minutes, I had a little bit of a, a retreat. I just walked the parking lot for nine minutes, talking to God. I Listen, God can hear me inside. It's, it's, it's not a reception issue. It's different for me when I went out there. It's different for me when I take this Bible and I go outside and read it. It just is. The wind blows the pages. The sun's shining on. I can't see the ink. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, the bugs, whatever. It's different. And I want to implore you, get outdoors. Get some adventure. Get some wilderness in your life. We went on a hike the other day, and my son was like, Dad, this isn't very much in the woods, is it? It's like, no, it isn't, because it was right along a road, you know, for a while. And then we, you know, as you keep going, it got a little more um, wildernessy. I said, we're in there now, aren't we? Oh, yeah, it was. So, number one, I connect with God different, and I believe you do too. You guys who already understand this, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when you see the sun rise from the shore. You know what I'm talking about when you see the sun set from a deer blind. You know what I'm talking about when you're camping and you look up and you see the stars or you see the moon. Or I remember the first when I went to Canada. You talk about out of your element. I went to Canada and we're we're fishing for I don't know three or four days, and I thought I ain't never seen anything like this. Beautiful. Something happens inside when you you connect with your creator. I ain't no tree hugger. I'm not, I'm not no guy. I, you know, I met a guy on a trail uh, s- several months ago. Said he's, he's standing there barefooted. And I don't know if I shared this with y'all, but he was like, I, he just wanted to heckle me, I guess. I just got done doing the three-mile loop. I guess he was starting, but he hadn't gone anywhere. And then he starts like, he talks about Mother Nature. And I said, yeah, I don't know about Mother Nature, but I sure believe in God of the universe who created this. I believe in Jesus. He didn't want no part of that. And he wanted to keep arguing. 200 years ago, they didn't have shoes like that. They, I said, we're on the same page, guy. We're, we're just tracking quite a bit different though, at the same time. Like he just wanted to argue like about nature. I'm for it. I just believe God is the one that created it. I don't know if you have to walk around barefoot. If you want to do that, that's great. I don't care. I just want you to get outside. I, I would love for you to just stay in the driveway for 15 minutes. So number one, I think I, I know I connect with God just completely different outdoors. One of my kids said that the other day. I was like, oh, I agree. Number two, the shared experiences that it has given me, just going out with my wife and kids. Now, listen, I know not everybody's in the same season. Some people are single. Some people are divorced. Some people have kids. Some people don't have kids, whatever. Season I'm in, married. uh, Where are we at? 21 years. we got three kids. Um, I know they're getting closer to getting out of the house. My wife reminds me all the time. But I'm blessed that the Holy Spirit really got me where I still had some time. But some of you guys are in a season where you don't have kids at home. You you have more time. Some of you guys are single. You got different time, right? It has created a shared experience for us that is priceless. It's priceless. And we got a bunch of pictures. And I get frustrated. My kids want to selfies in front of rocks or bridges or waterfalls. I'm like, come on. But it's got to look good on Instagram. It's got to look good for your friends. They always use a weird filter. But hey, I'll miss that someday. And I hope there's something in them that says, let's give that old bearded guy a call and see if he wants to go walk somewhere. Or let's see if he wants to go on a camping trip with us. Or let's see if he wants to go to the beach with us. Or maybe he just wants to go, you know, hey, Dad, will you start the fire in the backyard? That will be one of the greatest honors of my life if, if one of my kids says, Dad, we're real busy with the kids and stuff, but tonight we want to have a fire. Would you go out there and start it? You got it. That wouldn't happen. That wouldn't have happened seven years ago. <laughs> Mom would have had, grandma would have had to go, whatever she's called then. She, my, my wife would have to go out there and do it. Like, no, there's something about having that skill. I, and I didn't have it. And there's other skills. I don't, I'm looking at a shelf across here. I went to Amazon. I bought a bunch of books. There's one that says Outdoorsman. 
uh, camper guide. Some I, I just I just started to start resourcing myself up. Hey, you're not going to get any younger. And man, when I did it, I connect with God different. Number two, the shared experiences. I will be on my deathbed someday if the Lord allows me to be on a deathbed. And I'll be thankful for those experiences. There's no doubt about it. From the mountains to the shore and everything in between, because I was willing to say, let's do it. The first kayak trip, I had no business being in a kayak. And yet all my kids were in kayaks. I was the most nervous one. Not really because of the kayak, because all my kids were in kayaks. And I thought, man, if something happens, I don't know if I can get to them. And you get done with that kayak trip. We got off that body of water. I don't remember what it was, but it was uh, a body of water that we went down. I don't know how long we did it, but we did it. And we've done it since. My wife loves those things. She loves to go out and do that stuff. Maybe your spouse doesn't. So maybe for you, because your spouse doesn't, and that maybe that won't change. I, I don't force them, right? then maybe you look for some other guys that you say, hey, you want to take a kayak trip together? You want to go do an overnight camping deal together? Make sure they're good men that you know won't hurt your marriage. I mean, that's one thing that we talk about in our campouts and hikes and stuff is I hope when you come home, you're a little bit better because of that time. Your wife never has to wonder if we're up to no good. Never. And the third thing that it has done, and I'm trying to think how to word this. I'll just say it this. It has grown me as a man. Just getting outside, just getting outside, whether it's doing chores, raking leaves, mowing the grass, whatever, finding your wilderness component is grown me as a man to, to go on a hike and to figure out, okay, what do we need to take? And I'm not a carry, I'm not like carrying all my gear in guy. Like I haven't done that yet. Maybe that'll happen someday. I don't do that, but I know guys that do it. Uh, you know, whether it's fine, like, like we just got done on a, a hike, uh, three, three, four days of hiking. We did uh, the Red River Gorge in Slade, Kentucky. And then we went to the Smoky Mountains in, uh, is that Pigeon Forge, Tennessee? And being able to figure out the logistics of those things. And all that, like, we look forward to that Slade, Kentucky trip since like June. Like my kids would talk about it every day. Like they couldn't wait. It's grown me as, as, as a man. And I'm so thankful that I did not stay in my comfort zone and go, well, this is who I am. This is what I do. No, getting outdoors and again, measuring yourself, it, it, it's, it's almost priceless. Getting outdoors and measuring yourself and having other people with you is so good for your soul. I remember leaving um, a, 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 a hiking trip with my wife and kids it was last year. And we were leaving the cabin on the last day. It was dark, and we were trying to get one more hike in before we got in the vehicle and, and took off. And I remember telling my wife, I didn't realize how much we needed this. This was good for our soul. And she's like, I agree. I agree. And it gives us confidence that we need to do it again. And again, we don't, we're not weekend warriors, okay? My kids are, I got three kids at home. They're very, very involved in their school. They're a part of a great school. They're very involved in it. My wife is there. Like we're active, active, active. I'm a, I'm a pastor at a church. We're thoroughly invested in this little small church in Indianapolis. My kids serve there. Like my wife, is, we're on, you know, out of town. She's like, I got to send my email to remind everyone who's serving. And like, we don't have weekends free to do this stuff. So our margin is different than maybe some of yours. And maybe some of you guys are like, I don't have it either. But we find the time. We find the time where we say, okay, Maybe we did it then. Maybe we can't do it for another four, five, six months, but we're going to have an, another one. But in the meantime, you can have other components. Again, you can have campfire moments. You can have walk around the neighborhood moments. You can have things. You just need to get outside. I, you just need to have some wilderness adventure in your life. I say all that to, for you to understand. There are men already doing this. So how is this pursue manliness thing really going to unfold? Do we need another social media account to post to? To No, I don't need another social media account like I need a fork in the eyeball, okay? But what we do want to utilize is a social media account to spur you on and to show other guys this is what's going on. We're all about community. We're all about building better men together. And that's what I hope we do. Now, so I want to I unpack this for you, okay? Forgive me. I want to unpack this for you. First thing first. 
The social media account I'm referencing is on Instagram. It's at Pursue Wilderness. Some of you guys are, I'm not on Instagram. I'm out. I'm sorry. It's at Pursue Wilderness, but you're in on the rest of the stuff, okay? I want you, if you would be willing to, to go follow that account if you're on Instagram, at Pursue Wilderness. You're like, Jared, I had no idea that this existed. I get it. So if you're going to at Pursue Manliness, which hopefully you do know exist, it's right there in the bio, or again, search Pursue Wilderness. Follow it. What you're going to find on that account is your typical regular post. It'll be outdoor stuff. It'll be scripture. It'll be encouragement. Maybe some gear. Maybe stuff that I've found and I'm using. Maybe, again, I got these uh, three guys with me who are doing this as well. They Maybe they have something. Maybe they have something they recommend. Like, hey, Jared, let's make a post of this. That. Oh, great, great. I won't be on all the hikes, okay? The, the, these other guys are doing it, but but we'll get to more of that in a second. There'll be scripture, though. Again, guys with families. I want to share some images with you guys of, of, of men and the experiences I have been a part of and experiences I haven't been a part of. But guys within the pursuit of manliness, and if you're listening to this, that's you who have done these things together. Again, I don't care if it's a deer blind, I don't care if it's kayaking, I don't care if it's taking 10 people on a hike, uh, canoes. Those things are like just aching to roll over, aren't they? I, I don't care what your thing is. Just get in that wilderness, just go do it. Here's the next thing you're going to find. So you follow the account. If you're there, you're going to, uh, that's what you're going to see. You're also going to see a couple times a week, you're going to see some some free stuff. And what I mean is a post that will be like a, a wilderness devotional. The point is you can take your phone with you if you're out there. I use like all trails all the time, or I'm using like my Garmin or whatever. So I always have my phone with me and I have a solar pack to charge if I need it. I don't, most of the time I don't, but I want to be prepared. You can take it and you can stop. Every once in a while we need to stop for a drink of water. And we, the other day this happened, we stopped and we're at this thing that looked like a, like an outdoor theater. And my daughter, middle daughter just shared her favorite verse. So we had her go up front of the theater thing and say, hey, say it up there. I don't know why we did that. It was just kind of cool. My wife took a video of it. But you could sit on a bench. You could sit on a log. You can sit wherever or just stand and say, hey, why we get a drink of water? I want to share this with you real quick. They're real easy. They're real, real simple. And they're very practical. So you took some guys from church. You took your family, whatever. I want to give you a resource for free every week that you just open it up and go, okay, I can share this. We want to have some campfire conversations. You could sit out on your back deck around a fire pit. You can, you know, be out in the wilderness on your fire pit, whatever. Just a few things, that, again, that you can use. They're very simple. They're very practical. I would love for you to take a picture of that and, and, and tag us, Pursue Wilderness, and let me see you do that. I mean, that would be awesome. I want to help you connect spiritually and relationally. Again, what I said, I connect with God better. I've connected with my wife and kids and, and, and friends, for that matter, beyond them, uh, in ways that I couldn't otherwise. And number three, you've just grown as a man. I want here's, here's what I really want you to get from. I want you to tag at Pursue Wilderness. While you're at it, tag Pursue Manliness, too. That way I definitely will see it. If I don't see it, one of these guys will see it. If you post a picture and you tag at Pursue Wilderness, at Pursue Manliness, too, would help. And you, you tag us. And you have a picture of you with other people. Son, daughter, whatever. Deer blind, kayak, canoe, fire pit, on a hike, whatever. We took 40 guys from tribe on a hike on Friday before the retreat. It was awesome. It was almost so hard to get 40 guys in the picture. But you'll see it eventually. Because we'll, we'll post on it. And you tag us. I will send you a Pursue Wilderness pin or sticker, whatever I got in inventory, but right now it's going to be pins. I will send you a Pursue Wilderness pin for the people that are in that picture. You go on a hike with 10 people, I'll send you 10 pins or 10 stickers if that's what I have. Here's the offer. From November 1st, 2022 to November 1st, 2023. So if you're listening to this November 2nd, 2023, you're a day late. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I have to send out a million pins. I don't know if I'll send out two. But I want to do it. I want to incentivize this. I want you to get an envelope of pens or stickers, and I want you to go back to those people when they arrive, you know, three, five days later, when they arrive, and give it to them. They say, what's this for? It's because we took a hike, and I posted it uh, with Pursue Wilderness. Big picture, what I want is more people doing this on a hike, camp out, kayaking, fishing, whatever with other people, with the idea we're all in this together. We talk about building better men together. 
Let's build better marriages together. Let's build better children together. Let's build better neighborhoods and communities and men's ministries together. And one of the best ways to do that is get outside. Axe throwing. You got 10 guys at your axe throwing set up in your yard. Take a picture of all 10 guys in front of that axe throwing board and you tag at Pursue Wilderness or and at Pursue Mailiness. I'll say, hey. Send me your address. I want to send you. I want to send you some pins or stickers, whatever. And I want to say thank you. And I want you to hand those out to those people and say, "Hey, listen. This is not just for guys. Pursue manliness. Yeah, our focus ninety nine point nine percent men. This is for everybody. Just get out there. Bring them out. I would love again to have thousand people to that. What I don't know. Getting free pins because they and I say pin. I talk about like the pin you put on your hat. Your backpack or whatever, not a writing pin. I don't have any of those. I'll send those to you. And listen, if you tag Pursue Wilderness, Pursue Manliness, and you say, hey, you never got back with me, let me know. And here's how you're going to let me know. Email me, pursuemanliness at gmail.com. I just gave you a lot of information here. I'm sorry, but I want to make sure we get this right. Pursuemanliness at gmail.com. If you are going to do this and you say, Jared, I don't have Instagram, just send me your pictures through the email. I'll let you know. I will post those pictures on Pursue Wilderness because I want other people to see what you're doing. I want other people to do this. Let's raise up an army of men and women who are getting outside, who are getting outdoors, who are bonding together spiritually and relationally, measuring themselves physically to say, hey, let's stay active. Let's stay in nature. Let's stay healthy. Let's grow together. Let's get outside. Let's have a little adventure in our life. Let's get out of the chair. Let's go to REI. I don't go there. Expensive. Let's go somewhere. Let's buy some hiking shoes or at least shoes that, you know, have some traction to them or let's buy a fishing pole or let's, let's buy a tent. Let's put in the backyard. We don't know what we're doing. December 28th, 2020, my wife got COVID. That was the year. Got COVID. Everybody got it in December. It was like we had to walk around saying, unclean, unclean, right? It was just miserable. And so Christmas Eve services, and I've shared a little bit of that. But on December 28, 2020, I said, enough of this garbage. And so I went into the garage, grabbed a, what was it, a one-person, it was a two-person, it's a one-person, I did it, it's little. I grabbed a tent, a small one, and I put it in the backyard. I got the buddy heater out there. I started a fire, put some chairs out there, a bunch of wood out there, and we just hung out outside. It was cold. Would you stay the night out there? No, it was cold. It was cold. It was December 28th. We had an experience that they still remember because I said, we're not going to live inside in misery. We're not doing this. We're not. That was one of the greatest things. Backyard, little bitty pup tent, December 28th, freezing cold. I got my wife and kids all in this little tent with a propane buddy heater on them and a, a fire pit going. Is one of the greatest memories we've had. And it was a terrible, terrible existence right there. Everyone else gathering and hanging out. You can't do it because you got the COVID. You know, like, we're going outside. More importantly than all this, man, just get out there. Take your Bible out there. Go for a walk. Whatever it is, just get out there. Rent a cabin. Sleep in a hammock. Set up, you know, a a five-minute tent in 55 minutes. Just get it done. Just do it. Create your own wilderness experience. I want to go back to this. I want you to be a part of this. We want to be a part of this together. So if you're going to have these experiences, if you're going to go on the hikes, if you're going to go on the camping, you're going to do this stuff, would you be willing to either tag Pursue Wilderness or would you email me, pursuemanliness at gmail.com, those images And as a way for me to say, thank you, I appreciate that. I'm going to share that. I want the rest of the community to see this, to hopefully spur them on as well. I'll send you a pin for for the number of people that are in your group. Now, again, you got to go with others. Don't send me no picture of you in the deer blind by yourself. I mean, you could do that, but I'm not sending you no pin for that. It's too expensive. But I want to send them out. I want to get them in your hands. I want to get them on your hats and your backpacks. I'd love for you to take a picture of the pins. I'd love for you to take a picture of you handing out the pins. What we want to do is we want to grow this community and say, we have men of adventure. We have men of like wilderness. And then we have guys like me who are saying, I I want to learn this now before it's too late. And when you do that, the shared experiences you'll gain from that 
you will be so grateful you did. Amen. Follow the account at Pursue Wilderness. Get your groups together. Get your family together. Get your kids together. Go do something. And then tag me. Let me know. Man, I'd love to celebrate that with you. Amen. I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you for listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. If you would, make sure to visit iTunes and leave a five-star review to let others know what you think of this show. When you get a chance, make sure to visit thepursuitofmanliness.com to see what is available in the gear store, find more information out about Tribe, and much more. Thanks for listening, and let's keep pursuing biblical manliness. Manliness.